Our scripture lesson today is from Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, chapter 8, 1 through 13. Now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. But if any but if any man love God, the same is known of him. As concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we now we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. For that for though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there may be gods, many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom all are all things, and we by the him. How that there is not in every man that knowledge, for some with con conscience of the idol unto this hour, eat as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. But meat commendeth us not to God, for neither if we eat we are the better, neither if we eat not we are the worse. But take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. For if any man see the See thee, which has knowledge, sit at the meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him <coughs> which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to the idols. And, the, and through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. But when he sin so against the brethren and wound their weak, con their weak conscience, ye shall sin against Christ. But wherefore, if I make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. This is the word of God for the peace of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Let us pray. O gracious God, may your word this day speak to us in such a way that it is transforming for us in the way we live. For we know that your word is not simply many thoughts that are brought together, but they are a way of life given to us so that we might have life and have it abundantly in relationship with one another. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. It's, it's always a good thing when <coughs> God's Word, Holy Scripture, uh, offers us uh, things that are very practical for our living. Um, uh, the other day, um, it was at um, the service of, of Norman Sharon. Um, no, it was at the visitation the night before that Donald and I were talking, and we got to talking about um, Norman's beehives, how he was a beekeeper, and how Donald is and the family is uh, doing bees as well. And I commented that 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 we had interest, uh, Beth and I had interest in in learning how to, to, to raise bees, too. Um, and um, when you think about something like that, it's really a matter of, of, of learning how to do it, um, practicing it. And um, so anyway, that's something that's still on our agenda. Um, how do you learn how to, to raise bees and raise honey? Uh, there's just a lot of things that you have to to practice and learn practical things about it. And it's true with all of life, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 
uh, you just have to, to learn very practical things about it. Um, the Apostle Paul was one of the first uh, Christian missionaries. Um, as we know, he was, uh, had this experience of transformation on, on uh, the road, um, and uh, he was blinded, and his eyes were open to see that, that Jesus was indeed the promised Messiah of Jews. Uh, and he was called to take this message of the good news of Jesus Christ to the Gentile world. And so Paul left the comfort of, of, his, of his Jewish culture behind, and he went out into the pagan world, into the Greek world, uh, to begin to proclaim uh, the good news of Christ. And um, Paul was a, was a very highly educated person. He talks about the level of his education, that he was, was highly educated as a Jew, um, he was a teacher among Jews, and um, so he had this high level of knowledge as he went out as a missionary, um, but he also had this, these personal revelations that he had received from the risen Christ, calling him to go out and take the good news to the Gentile world. Um, uh, I grew up uh, with missionary parents. And um, there's something wonderful in that that I experienced in that when you go to another land and to another people, you learn a lot. I mean, you, you, your eyes are opened up to another people, to another culture, uh, to another way of living, to another way of thinking. And it's, it's a growing experience. Um, as Beth and I have done missionary work in Latin America, I think we would both say that yes, it's been a growing experience to learn about another people and how they live and how they think and, and, and how the gospel of Jesus Christ impacts their life where they are and where they're living. Um, and so you can imagine what, what Paul is going through when he goes out to these foreign places, these foreign lands, taking the good news of Jesus Christ and having his eyes opened and becoming aware of a different culture and a different people. Now, Paul had a strategy for doing that. Um, there had already been something that was happening in the Jewish world that was called the diaspora. The diaspora literally means spreading out. Um, the Jews were not just living in, um, uh, in the Holy Land. They were not just living in Israel. Um, but they had already spread out into the wider world for various reasons. One of the reasons was what? They had been conquered by the Babylonians and they had taken them away to other parts of the world. And so that was one reason for the diaspora, for the spreading out. It was a forced diaspora. They were exiled to other lands. Um, but also some Jews simply migrated. Uh, they moved to other places partly because of commerce. Uh, it's where the market was uh, for their goods. And uh, for these various reasons, when Paul went to a town like Corinth, which we read from today, this, the, the letter to the Corinthians, he found there were already Jews there, fellow Jews, who believed what he believed. Uh, there was already a synagogue there and Jews learning and, and, and worshiping in the synagogue. And so that was naturally the first place that Paul went when he went to one of these foreign <coughs> countries. Um, he went to the synagogue because there he found people like him who thought like him, who had shared his culture and so forth and so on. Um, but he also discovered that there were what he calls God-fearers hanging around the synagogue. Now, who were they? They were Gentiles who had become attracted to Judaism. They liked the high moral standards of Judaism and other things that attracted them to the Jewish faith. And, but they were Gentiles. And we know from, from what we read in, in the Old Testament that, that Jews for a period of time had, had difficulty with Gentiles and that they tried to stay away from them, didn't they? 
Why? Because they thought they would become unclean if they, if they mixed with Gentiles or if they rubbed up against Gentiles, if they somehow associated with Gentiles, they would become <coughs> unclean in that. Um, and so um, it, was, it was a difficult process for Gentiles to be able to enter into the Jewish faith. Over a period of time, they did, but, but it was not without obstacles. And so obviously, an obstacle for Paul, as he went out as a missionary, was the fact that he was encountering unclean people. He was taking the good news of Jesus Christ to Gentiles. Now, how do you do that? How can you relate to, quote, unclean people when you're a Jew and share with them the good news of Jesus Christ? Because you have to relate to them. So take this for example, picture this if you will, um, that, that Paul is walking along in the town of Corinth. He's gotten to know a few of the Gentile men in the town. Uh, they're merchants, something like that. And on this particular day, they're sitting around on a table outside their store. They're playing cards, and they're eating hot dogs. Now, of course, I'm making this up, but, but I'm using it as an example. They're eating hot dogs. And Paul says, I'd really like to get close to those men and share with them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, so he goes over to them, starts chatting with them, and they say, Paul, have a seat here. Have a hot dog with us. Paul says, a hot dog? I can't eat hot dogs. I'm a Jew. That's a meat that's not been cleansed. It's unkosher. It's against Jewish law for me to eat a hot dog. And yet I want to get close to these men and share with them the gospel of Jesus Christ, and yet I don't want to eat a dirty hot dog. What do I do? Well, you know what Paul did? He finally started eating hot dogs. Because it was more important for him to get close to those men and tell them about Jesus Christ than was the laws of Judaism about cleanliness of foods. And so if you read the lesson today, he says here in, in verse 8, food will not bring us close to God. We're no worse off if we do not eat and no better off if we do. And what Paul is saying, the stomach doesn't inherit eternal life. <laughs> it's the soul. It's the soul. And so Paul found himself um, uh, giving up certain parts of Jewish law, particularly those that had to do with, with food laws, um, so that he could get close to the Gentiles and share with them the heart of the good news of God's love. That doesn't shape the stomach. <laughs> that shapes the soul. See. Now, part of the dilemma that Paul had in that was that if he was sitting at that table playing cards with those Gentile men who are unclean and eating their hot dogs, <clears throat> there may be a fellow Jew from the synagogue down the road who would come walking by and say, Ooh, Paul's sitting down eating hot dogs with unclean people. Eating unclean food with unclean people. This is horrible. And Paul's trying to be a leader in the synagogue and, and he's breaking our laws. You see the dilemma? And so Paul's solution to that is, he says, when I'm back in the synagogue and I'm with my fellow Jews who are attracted to the way of Christ and yet who still believe firmly in those Jewish food laws, I'm going to respect those food laws. I'm not going to eat hot dogs in their presence. But he says if there's an opportunity over here in the corner somewhere, I may be out of sight, where I can get close to these Gentile men and play cards with them and eat hot dogs with them, I'm going to do it if I can win them to Jesus Christ. 
Two-faced? No. Paul says, I'm not being two-faced. I'm doing what I need to do with some people over here to, to love them into Christ. And what I'm trying to do with these over here to love them into Christ having to balance some of these laws of Judaism that are really cultural laws and have nothing to do with the salvation of the soul. You see. Paul says, I know in my brain that eating a hot dog isn't going to condemn me. I know, I know it's not. But if there's a fellow Jew who is coming to learn about Christ for whom that is still a problem, I'm not going to let my knowledge, my awareness of that, hurt my relationship of love with them. You see what Paul is saying? Don't we face that day in and day out as Christians, brothers and sisters? But we don't all know alike. We don't all think alike. There may be issues of abortion, homosexuality, all those hot issues of politics that divide Christians. And we want to argue our position on that point, on this point, on that point, because we know, we know what the truth is. We know the answer. Paul says knowledge puffs us up where we claim to know what we know and in claiming to know what we know we fail to love the other as we ought to love. Knowledge puffs up. The love builds up. How wonderful are the scriptures to give us guides to practical living, aren't they? To know the circumstance out of which Paul was struggling as a missionary. He was a liberated thinker. He, he had a high education. He knew, he knew that, that the stomach wouldn't get you to heaven or hell. But he had to put aside that knowledge for some who believed that it made a difference what you ate. For Paul lifted love above the heart. How wonderful it is to hear that kind of practical advice that comes to us through God's holy word. So that we too in our own living as Christians are relating to one another who, who certainly across the spectrum of Christianity share different knowledge of what we think is true or not true about various issues of life. And if we become puffed up about that knowledge, then we find that we're incapable of loving one another well. There's places for dialogue about it, and we need to be in dialogue about those issues. We need to talk about what we think we know and about what you think you know. And be in a generous and gentle conversation about that. But more importantly, at times we have to set aside what we think we know to love the other better. Thanks be to God for his holy word.